across the street. I'd be happy to field any questions that the board might have or that uh, any interested parties might have from the audience. How many, what's the anticipated number of employees uh, that are going to have? Uh, approximately 30 employees. 30 employees? And uh, the parking, uh, I gather from driving by there, is in the rear? How many parking spaces are there? How much? 146. 146. Points. Does that meet our uh, code for the number of tables? I, I don't know. I can respond to it when we go through the department comments yeah. and recommendations. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Questions? Mr. O'Leary. Just a couple of questions. Um, one in relation to Mr. Palmer. He gives an address of 30, 30 Redmond Ave. I didn't find him in the most recent street list. I just moved into the town. That's the reason why. Okay, just, just curious. We just built a home on 30 Redmond Ave. Okay. And then as far as the uh, terms and conditions of the um, loan that you're looking to receive or already have, which would require a pledge of a license, the Stoneham Savings Bank? Yes. Um, what are the... Um, terms of the of the loan for time frame wise I'm not looking for I you already gave me the dollar amount I don't care about the interest rate but just how long are you looking for for the construction loan and how long is the, the license going to be pledged the construction loans one year it's a 25 year term loan okay um, but the license is pledged throughout the entire loan so it's 25 years yes yeah I don't know if that's normal but, uh, that's my only concern as far as Normal condition of the license, um, having it pledged for 25 years to the to the institution, which could possibly possibly um, impede your ability to sell it, you know, to transfer it to somebody else, and or should the board decide, for whatever reason, to uh, after a show cause hearing revoke it, our ability to transfer it to. I would, if, if I may, uh, members of the board, uh, I, I was not involved in the loan transaction itself, uh, but it makes sense to me that the, the reason why the uh, pledge is contemplated through the term of the loan is because it's a construction to permanent uh, that's all part of one closing uh, that will not require any subsequent closings. In terms of the pledge going forward uh, in the event of a transfer, in the event of uh, any action taken by the board on the license itself, I think that we could probably address those concerns uh, <coughs> by specifically asking or uh, requesting the pledge in accordance with the renewal every year. And the bank's security is only as good as the license in any event. So even if, um, you know, I, I think on, a, on a, an annual basis going forward, if we're cautious to make sure that we provide for that pledge and the request for a renewal, I, I think that would probably accommodate some of the concerns the board might have. Yeah, you understand my concern in relation to, you know, your pledge is a license, and the license goes with who the license holder is. So that would then constrain the town in relation to the number of licenses we have and what can happen with it. And depending upon your performance in relation to our rules and restrictions, you know, if, you're, if you're in compliance, that's fine. You know, if you're not, then an issue is created. Uh, I guess my uh, interest is the need to pledge it for, uh, and I understand it's subject to an annual renewal on our part, 25-year um, period. And I would think that would be somewhat excessive in terms of the condition that the lending institution would require, because most of the, uh, well, I don't want to assume anything. What other collateral is there for the loan? Is it the building? Or is it just the, the assets? Just the assets of the corporation? Well, plus personal. Uh, personal so you guarantees. got personal guarantees. Absolutely. Personal guarantees, I would assume, from the all four principles? Or? Yes. Okay. And then uh, and then the assets of the corporation, which would be furniture, fishing equipment, cost receivables, so on and so forth. And, and, and the liquor license being considered an asset of the corporation. Certainly. That's how they Oh, I know how they view it. I don't know, I'm just bank, I, mean. I know. I know how they view it. I'm a bank examiner. So okay. I know how they view it. Um, so my concern is tying that up for this period of time. And, and I don't recall 
excuse me, I do recall maybe in one other instance where a license had been pledged and the board annually would vote upon that, allowing it to happen. Um, I don't know the way that it's we laid out right voting, here. Wouldn't we not be voting annually anyway? Just on a renewal. But as far as the pledge of the license, generally the licensing board would be required to allow that to happen. I'm not so sure under the way that it's currently structured, you know, unless the motion is uh, amended or reflects an annual vote of this board to allow the pledge to take place. That's my concern. Because again, when it comes to transferring licenses and the value of it, uh, traditionally here in North Reading, there hasn't been any substantial amount of value on the license other than the licensing fee because we've had an adequate number of licenses available <coughs> as opposed to more people wanting to open an establishment mm -hmm. and purchasing a license from a licensee and paying, you know, a, some sort of a, a fee of, upon it. So I, I don't see the structure here requiring an annual vote of this board in relation to the pledge of the license. So that's my only, my only concern. So do you have a suggestion on how to remedy it? Uh, I'll have to look at the motion again, but um, and again, I don't think in the- In terms of our motion. Yeah, I don't think our motion even calls for- It does allow, it doesn't. Uh, allowance for the pledge, which I have seen in the past. But we could When add. other people have- uh, we, we certainly could add that. Uh, but I, again, I don't have anything to offer as far as the actual wording, as it how it should be, mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that the town's interest is protected. Again, I just recall in the past we've done it, but the licensee has come in and asked for us to do it. All other licenses that we issue, I'm not aware of any of them that are pledged as an asset of the corporation to ensure that they pay the lender. Other than that, I think, it, I don't think it's the right thing, but it should be an obligation to Mr. be concerned about that. Steve, uh, uh, expertise is excellent to you. I just want to make sure I understand. By them having it uh, part of the, uh, to the bank for 25 years, uh, is, are we losing control of the, of the to license? To a certain degree. What happens is, is if they default on their loan with the bank, the asset, which is the license, right. falls to the control of the bank, subject to our approval as far as who they're looking to transfer it to and all the rest. But it can tie up that license for a time period, depending upon if there's litigation involved. You know, the bank can't come in and operate the, can't operate the restaurant, and the bank manager or the branch manager can't become the license holder, <laughs> you know, without coming before the board. But it is an asset of the corporation that they're pledging right now as an, as an asset to secure their loan with the bank. And it does have some value, certainly. Um, but it does tie the license up in terms of potential litigation and time frames. You know, should they default, decide to close the door, and or, you know, they don't perform satisfactory to our terms and conditions, and we have to suspend the license. Or revoke the license. But, but if we were to re revoke and not renew the license, that license has no value. We have but available they could, licenses. But they could then lay, lay claim to, you know, if they default in some fashion or other, the bank still has some standing. So that's why in the past, and again, I think it's only been maybe in one instance, an establishment came and had it chose to pledge the license as an asset of the corporation in terms of getting a construction loan or a line of credit or whatever it is to operate the, the restaurant, uh, they came before the board and asked for permission to pledge the license. Because we're, we're the licensing authority. Uh, and then we would acknowledge, at least for that one year time period, that that's the case. Now, I know they've disclosed it, but. But, but Steve, if we, for, if the board down the road for one reason or another does not grant the license uh, in a given year, then they can't use the license, nor can the bank. That would be on the annual basis. On the annual basis. But what I'm talking in the interim, if something occurs, they default on their loan, uh, 
Uh, they served minors and we decided to suspend or revoke the license you know, or some other right. transgression takes place where we decide to revoke the whole thing. Right. The net asset of the corporation goes away and then, you know, you just end up in litigation. That, that, that's the bottom line. Uh, but then we don't, we don't still have another license available is what you're saying. Because it, it's could it, could it could tie it up. It could tie it up. It right. could tie it up for an indefinite period of time. Right. Uh, you know, so that we should go into this knowing full well acknowledging and voting to allow them to pledge it, whether it be on an annual basis or subject to renewal on an annual basis. So that then the, the bank is aware of it, aware that we're aware as to that they're pledging it and that it's only on an annual basis and it kind of protects them, it protects us. And so for a 12-month period, we're locked up. But after that, the collateral is no longer available. And it's subject to our approval rather than their performance. Sean, you understand where I'm coming from? I do. OK. I'd have more of a concern if we didn't have any, any license that weren't available. If this was the last license we had, I'd have more of a concern. But we don't. How many do we have? We have probably four or five. Yeah, there's additional licenses. More of a concern going. at that point. Yeah. Uh, Mike? Uh, two questions. Um, first, Greg, are we going to go through each one of the departments? I, I'll Any review questions? that at the end. Yeah. At the end. Okay. Yes. I know some of them had some recommendations mm -hmm. and for the terms, and I definitely mm -hmm. want to make sure those are addressed. What are the operating hours of the facility? Uh, 11.30 is when we would want to be open for lunch. And uh, the other place that we run right now, we uh, have till midnight with uh, the caveat that everybody has to be out by 12.30. So when we grant, this is my first time going through this, so I apologize. I'm going to ask some questions because I'm new to it. So when we grant a license, do we set operating hours based on when they can serve alcohol? Do not? Yeah. yeah. So that is something we will do tonight? Uh, depends on the motion. <laughs> okay. Um, but what, do you, what have we done in the past? How do we? Well, I think it depended on the particular establishment, as you recall. Uh, <coughs> the discussions that took place at this, uh, regarding the Senate Cafe. So I noticed uh, the police department didn't have but anything. But there's some nominal uh, time, right? There's a state requirement, uh, state law too, I believe, associated with uh, the time. There is, but normally we, the board hasn't been enacting specific closing, opening and closing hours with okay. licenses. It's been left to the discretion of the licensee. Um, five days a week, seven days a week? Seven, seven days a week. And so on Sundays, same hours as any other day? Yes, if we could. Um. <clears throat> That's enough. I'm going to give some more thought to my back. questions, okay. but you can come back to me. I don't have any questions. Greg, you want to go through this? What would you like me to go through, sir? First question that came first question that came up oh, well we we'll go through them one at a time. Mm -hmm. The Conservation Commission comments have to do with the owner of the premises. The the owner of the premises is not the licensed applicant. The licensed applicant is not responsible, nor is the applicant applied for an order of conditions through the Conservation Commission. Second comment was from the Community Planning Commission. Uh, chairman had asked relative to parking whether there were any issues or concerns concerning compliance with parking requirements. As part of the um, site plan approval granted by the CPC, they would specify the number of parking. You'll note on the comment uh, bullet number three that the licensee has met all conditions of the site plan approval granted through the CPC. Excuse me, Greg, do they have these? Uh, that I do not know. I do not know whether they have those. I apologize. Normally, I delegate that off to myself. I, I, I do not have them uh, uh, unless they were delivered by email that I didn't see. No, they would they would have been coming in literally until the last moment. So I'll be happy to give you mine when I'm done. Yeah. Next, com next comment was from the police department. Relative to TIPS training, the board requires um, any licensee to have their employees trained in the TIPS program. That's a requirement that's not unique to this license. It's uh, any holder of a liquor license. What they would require to do is su su supply and certify on an annual basis that their employees who are involved in the service of alcohol have comparable alcohol education training. Um, that's done annually. 
comments from the fire department indicates that there are no um, issues at this time because the facility is under construction.